hello everyone welcome to knowledge in day once again so in this particular video we will get started with google cloud platform gcp in short right so we'll try and understand that how can you go ahead and quickly get started with creating google cloud account which is quite easy really right and we will try to uh, discuss some other very elementary topics of gcp and idea is that we should have a you know series of videos where uh, we will be able to cover each and every topic on gcp and while we are doing that we'll also try to draw some parallels with uh, that of aws because we have covered so many topics on aws already on our channel and if you have understanding of those topics it would be helpful to just kind of draw the comparison it's not really to compare in the sense that which one is better or which one is worse not like that it is just to uh, kind of compare so that you know in your mind you are able to draw some similarities that's all it is okay so we'll try to do that uh, wherever possible and uh, you know some of the places it might be it might be that you know you you have not studied or worked on uh, aws concept so that's fine you can just uh, learn the gcp part and move ahead for that matter okay but uh, it's it's my belief that if you are able to uh, make some relation with a concept which you already know then it helps okay so to get started on google cloud platform i think uh, it's really easy because they give you some amount of credits which you can go ahead and use um, you know apart from the 12 months free thing okay so what what you need to do is of course uh, you will have a gmail account if you don't have a gmail or google account go ahead and create one free of cost search for google cloud and then go ahead and uh, click on that url which is cloud.google.com you can see at the top i am i'm already logged in with with my gmail account and the good thing here is that you can see you get $300 in free credits right and free usage of up to 20 plus products what does that mean so like you would you would know that every cloud provider gives you some amount of free uh, usage for 12 months right you can go ahead and uh, look at the google cloud uh, page as well and try and understand that how much do you get free of cost that is fine if you can click here and you can see that but apart from that right apart from that you also get this additional 300 dollars which is really good so which means there will be certain things which will not get covered as part of the free tier you can see here at the bottom you have free tier uh, written which like you will be able to use different services but only to a certain limit if you go ahead and use above that you will be charged right so for example if i am using let's say fire store and i'm storing more than 1 gb of storage then i will be charged for that now the good thing is this 300 dollars credits which you are getting this helps you to cover that experimentation if i'm right um, this uh, 300 dollar credit would be applicable to you for um, for 90 days okay and uh, you can go ahead and basically utilize this in the first 90 days which i think is really good for someone to get started right if you if you are dedicated go ahead and get started with google cloud and uh, you know in the first 3 months right you have this 300 dollar credit to play around right i think it's really good so uh once you have logged in you can go ahead and click on get started for free uh and uh google cloud will uh of course give you all the necessary things to go ahead and uh, play with so you can see here at the top you will see your uh, gmail or uh, you know google account details which is fine on the right hand side you can see 300 dollars credit for free which you can spend in the next 90 days that's very important to understand right next 90 days you can you have to go ahead and like utilize this after this it won't be available that's very important to understand and it says uh, no auto recharge after free trial ends we ask you for a credit card to make sure you are not a robot um, uh, we you won't be charged unless you manually upgrade to a paid account so uh, there is a good thing here with google cloud that 
you will have to change your account to a paid account and then only your credit card will get charged so when we sign up at this point they do verify our credit card just to ensure that we are you know a, a human is signing up that's it but let's say after three months right once after three months or whenever you want to actually convert your account to a paid account you will have to do an explicit action from your end uh, to be able to you know do that so that's what it is so uh, we'll go ahead and quickly um, you know select your country and you know uh, we'll go ahead and uh, just sign up well so if you if you if you want you can go ahead and give your work email and get this additional uh, dollars in the free trial but it's your choice i'm not going to do that i'll just say this and i'll say continue okay then of course it asks me a mobile number so that uh, can verify so you will put the otp which you receive on your mobile phone and press verify okay so now you need to uh, you know set up your account type it has taken business so i'm just gonna specify this so we'll go ahead and put the card details and we'll see how does it go ahead so after filling all the details we'll go ahead and press on start my free trial and uh, so it will ask the cvv so after putting this otp it should be able to verify my credit card and uh, hopefully it should go ahead all right so you can see here is the important stuff it says welcome knowledge india gcp cloud your free trial includes 300 dollars in credit to spend over the next 90 days it is important to help us serve better you know answer these questions this 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 it is really up to you you know what brought you to this and that you can just go ahead and answer whatever you like really you know yeah, i'm interested in all of this what describes your role and just say done okay so uh, it it is going to give you some option that you are new if you want to get started go ahead and select one of this i'll just say skip okay of course our account is set up we got the free credits as well great if i click here you'll be able to see create project my first project got created so it looks like this project got created and you are able to see in the notification this bell icon is really useful all the actions which you take um, uh, you know whether it was successful or not you'll be able to see those details here i like this part here this is really good you get to see that in the same way uh, in azure as well uh, in case of aws uh, you do not see it in this way it comes at the top uh, you know like a status bar or a, or a message bar i should say and once you close that it's gone right whereas uh, in this case uh, this is a kind of a common panel which opens up or a model pop-up or i should say panel which opens up and this will have all your actions which you have taken right it will show you all the things one after another so a good one to see you can also see here at the left side on the top my first project is already selected if i click here you'll be able to see this project is already selected if i click here on all you can see that this is the only project available so the name of this project is my first project and the id of this project is something elegant hope this 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 right so uh, this is also important to understand we'll talk about the project thing that how uh, you know google cloud actually organizes all the resources so project is a really critical um, entity in that i would say or uh, you know um, the project is really important there uh, here you will have uh, all the resources uh, grouped under projects right so you can think of a project as a um, as a grouping in terms of im and in terms of billing right uh, so somewhat similar to aws account but of course you cannot just say exactly similar to that but somewhat similar to that you'll be able to see that for a particular project how much money have you spent and within a project you may have multiple resources 
okay that's how it works uh, in terms of permission setup etc also you can set up permissions at a project level of course it is possible to do at certain resources level as well which we'll talk about but at the project level you can do it as well so that's why i was saying it is somewhat similar to uh, similar to having an aws account okay so you have to understand here we created one gcp account right and within that now our first project is created if i want i can go ahead and create another project as well so right you have 11 projects remaining in your quota request and increase so if you remember we have talked about hard limits and soft limits when we discussed aws similar to that now there also it is called quota here also it's called quota it's basically certain limits which are enforced in your account uh, you know by default so for example um, probably 12 12 projects can be created here so that's why it says you have 11 projects remaining in your quota because one is already there 11 more i can create so so 12 is set as the limit initially now if i want to create uh, 40 projects 40 different projects i'll have to go and request an increase in the quota and then i'll be able to create x number of projects okay for now we are good so what i need to do is i need to give a name right and you can see it is generating some automatic project id right it also says it cannot be changed later the name can be edited later also but the id cannot be edited that is an important thing to understand okay so uh, in enterprise setup what organizations try and do is they go ahead and make sure that they follow a naming convention for the id of the project right because name is something which is editable right for example this is coming i later on i can go ahead and change this as well but id is something which cannot be edited so um, uh, in an enterprise setup you would uh, define a naming strategy and you'll follow that while creating the uh, you know while creating projects you will specify the id accordingly you would not want that your project id should be something random like this so what i'll do is let me press here edit and here I'll go ahead and try to give a custom project ID. You can see it can have lowercase only, not uppercases, lowercase letters, digits, and hyphens. So these three things you can use. So I may, I you know, I may decide that what how I'll name it is like dev. I will say that um, this is for within KI. So I'll say KI. You know, it's really up to us how we want to name it, and I will just call it 001 for now. We will do a proper setup and i will uh, try to you know talk to you about naming convention as well later on but for now this is what i'm naming it and we'll just go ahead and say create for now i'm not choosing organization we'll come to organization as well so you can see this project is getting created good and uh, in a couple of seconds it should be ready and now i can go ahead and press on select project so basically you can see when i do select project at the uh, at the top you know this id came right so if i go ahead and uh, let's say click on something uh, like compute engine resources if i click on this maybe click on vm instances you can see at the top uh, you know this project name is coming right and uh, it says that i need to enable this api so we'll talk about this uh, in a separate video but for now what you need to understand is that there are two projects which are created and um, both of them have got their unique ids of course if i click here uh, click on this particular project and if i want to change something so what i could do is if let's say i want to change the name of this project i'll click here and i'll go to this particular icon which you know brings me to this manage resources page and here i can select my project in which i'm interested and here there should be an option of settings here yeah settings and in the settings if i want i can go ahead and change the name here let's say i want to call it my new project now right so i can go ahead and change that whereas uh, of course i cannot change the project id in the same way this project number also is auto generated right and i cannot change this so it's very important to understand the difference between these three project name is something which you specify can be changed whenever you want even in future so it need not be unique project id is something which you get to specify but 
you are able to specify it only in the start you can you know once you specify it you cannot change it later on and this project number is something which you don't get to specify and of course you cannot change it as well so you can think of project number as something which is internal to google really right whereas project id is something with which you can go ahead and identify each and every project of yours in a in a unique way you can have a naming convention and hence accordingly you'll be able to you know identify each and every project and many of the places people do choose this thing that they will keep project id and project name same right that's that's also there but i would highly recommend that at that you should have a naming strategy around project id otherwise it can become just a big mess because once you have created the project you cannot go ahead and change the project id later on right so i just did this i'll say save and you will see that at the top now the name has become my new project whatever right of course uh, in everything internally works based on id so you can see here in the url it is the id so doesn't matter right it is just a display name right that's it in this first video all all we wanted to do was uh, you know just show you that how to set up your google cloud account and get inside uh, i hope you understood this so i will request you to go ahead and uh, do this on your end uh, and then move on to the next video and uh, learn along with us in case uh, you know you have already used the 300 dollars which uh, google gave you earlier so my recommendation would be go ahead and create a new google account and using that new google account you can very well go ahead and set up your account in google cloud and use it for your learning purposes right please understand this is for learning purposes only um, and not for running a production workload so it should be okay to create another google account and learn using that okay so we'll meet you in the next video and we'll explore further thank you